we had a placard on our locker room that said our goal was national champs. And I'll be honest, when I first came in, I go, that's a pretty big chunk of uh, meat to bite off. But we got damn near close to that that goal. When you go to the academy back in 1982, 83, um, all you ever heard of was Roger Staubach and his football team. What's really cool is, uh, you know, I had no idea that I would end up being a part of that from a basketball perspective. I feel very proud of that that particular uh, team, and I feel very proud to have been a part of the best team in Naval Academy history. It's been 35 years since Navy's historic run to the Elite Eight. We look back at the greatest basketball team in Service Academy history. Heading into the 1985-86 college basketball season, expectations were high in Annapolis. The Mids were coming off an NCAA tournament berth the year before, advancing to the second round. We did have high expectations because we finished the year before pretty strong. We had everybody back. It was a year of optimism for sure. It's not that we didn't believe in ourselves. It's not that we didn't think we were capable. Uh, but it was important for us to prove to people we were capable. All of us kind of had our weaknesses and our strengths, but uh, but we just fit together like a glove, and and I think that allowed us to to really overperform. At center, a six eleven junior from Woodbridge, Virginia, number fifteen, David Robinson. I mean, I think it was kind of my coming out party in a way. You know, it, was, uh, you, I, it, it made it special because it, this was the team that allowed me to understand my real potential. David was just a normal guy like the rest of us growing into who he was as a player. I remember that I was skinny as a rail when I first got there. <laughs> I was 6'7 and I weighed 172 pounds. I remember they they weighed me in the first day and I thought, wow, uh, I probably need to gain a little weight. I, you know, by the time I was a, a junior, you know, I was 7'1 and about 230, 235 pounds. 1986 marks the third consecutive season that Butler has been named to the first team. Vernon was just a guy that came in and started as a plea. Uh, started every game. I mean, David wasn't one of those guys. David uh, David played behind Cliff Maurer. Great rebounder, good instincts around the ball, and, and a good scorer, could really shoot the ball. Unbelievable desire. And again, when he got the ball inside, he was either going to score or you're probably going to follow. He's the most important player in Navy basketball history. David's the best player in Navy basketball history. The head coaches for Navy in a sixth season the stories about Coach Evans get greater, too. And um, I, I, I think we all enjoyed playing for Coach Evans. I, I mean, I did. At Navy, you're not going to get that player that can do everything. So we had players that could do certain things, and uh, we tried to get them to be able to put them in a situation to be able to do those things. He was masterful at understanding which buttons to push to get us ready for a big game. He was a guy that was the head coach that was the – the, the good cop, bad cop, but he really managed that very, very well for all of us. You know, right at Navy, football is really king. You know, there's, there's, um, there's kind of football and then all the other sports. So it was kind of nice being that up and coming sport where everyone was excited about what we were doing. We came into that season with such high hopes and all of a sudden everybody was watching David and Vernon and our team. And, you know, we show up and we start playing some of those early season games. And instead of us showing up and, and surprising people and winning, uh, everybody was ready for us. My first thought was who the hell made up this 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 schedule? Because it was it was insane. When you're a mid mid major, you only have a few chances to shine in the spotlight and you gotta you gotta make the most of it. And I remember having two Christmases. We flew over the international date line to Tokyo played Air Force and Army, and then we come back and we play, uh, we like Georgia Tech, you know, and they were they were ranked like number five in the country or maybe higher. Having that grueling early season conference schedule um, was just one thing that I think would helped us be battle tested by the time we got to uh, February and March. A sellout crowd of nearly 6,000 has jammed Halsey Fieldhouse here at the Naval Academy tonight. When we started playing there, it was, you know, it's a, it's a, old field house and tr a track field house and wasn't really built for basketball. But by the time we got out of there, it, it had turned into a, a, a very, very exciting place to play. There were so many people standing in Halsey that the fire department came and had to, had to uh, 
you say no more people could come in because people were blocking the exit doors. It was a packed house. It was sold out every game uh, and uh, a lot of energy in the arena. Slated as a seven seed in the NCAA tournament, the mids down 10th seeded Tulsa 87 to 68. Navy's second round opponent at the Carrier Dome would be second seed Syracuse. Coming out of the Tulsa game, we felt really good about our momentum and how we had played. And so we approached the Syracuse game with you know, quite a bit of confidence. There was a lot of locker room fodder about, you know, well, Syracuse has got to play a bunch of short hairs again. We were the squids from Navy. So, I mean, you know, no one really took us that seriously, um, particularly as a basketball program. And that was, that's fine. Um, you know, I, I think it just gave us more of an opportunity to make, make a statement. I just remember we had a couple of people come in and give us some pep talks before the game. You know, a lot of folks thought that was the end of the line for us. I'm not gonna lie, maybe a couple of us did too. My mom had written this off before the game. She was just happy to be there in Syracuse. I just remember like, mom, we're gonna beat them today. We're gonna we're gonna beat Syracuse today. Robinson. We were playing in front of like 30,000 people at the Carrier Dome and just uh, overwhelmed with orange. And they were very, very, you know, Syracuse was a very talented team. And I just remember us just kind of coming together and really feeling like a family. Swing it, they got an alley-oop to Robinson. I think we wanted to run and we wanted to get the big guys running because we thought their big guys couldn't keep up with them. And as a result, David and Vernon both had great games. I think Syracuse was overconfident. We were more disciplined. We executed better. We stuck to our game plan. And, uh, and uh, you know, David had a great game and Vernon as well. And the score ended up uh, in our favor. I think coming back from the Syracuse game was one of the best moments. I remember uh, the bus rolling up into T court and thinking, wow, uh, this is this is unique. The whole brigade met us, the bus out at gate eight and rocked the bus back and forth into T court. And we had an instant pep rally. It's one of those times when everyone comes together and celebrates and and it's, it's just a kind of a time of unity and excitement. And um, yeah, I, I'll, I'll, I'll never forget that when we came back, it was pretty exciting. I think it's a memory that most mids, you know, will, will never forget. That moment is when we realized that this period while we were there as players and teammates is that Navy had become a basketball school as well. Up next for the mids was a matchup against 14 seed Cleveland State for a spot in the Elite Eight. That whole second half, Cleveland State was playing very, very well. And um, I mean, they could have won that game just as easily as, as we did. And it was back and forth. And um, it was, uh, we were fortunate enough to get a tie up at the end of the game uh, underneath our basket. And I was the inbounder and I just said, team, uh, there are no other options. We're gonna, you know, Dave, get open. I'm throwing it to you. That's the option. We all knew coming out that I was gonna get that ball. And, and that, you know, I just, I knew I was gonna have to do something with it. And so that's how I remember most about that at that particular time. And sure enough, as we cut and both Dave broke, broke to the middle, Connor throws in the ball, and Dave banks it off, and we and we hit the winning shot. What a glorious season for Navy. They are 30 and four. They've won 16 straight games. They're a step away from their first Final Four ever. We were the last game of the Elite Eight game, so the Final Four was completely set, and there was one game left. It's between Navy and Duke, and so you're out there warming up, and you're you're thinking, wow. We, we might be really going to the final four. You only get a handful of those moments in your life where you you know you either can push it over the edge and and, and turn it into something phenomenal or or it just is a is a good memory. And um and and I think I think as a team, it kind of caught up to us a little bit. We weren't in sync the way we had been the week before, and it was a tough game for us. Uh, we played well first ten minutes, and then. Um, Duke just had too many, too many weapons for us. Duke is on the way to Dallas. I remember a lot of us, you know, sitting on the bench and and uh, I, I, I fighting back tears, uh, literally, because it was, this was a pretty special group of uh, of guys to to play with and and to accomplish that. In the 35 years since, no service academy team has won a game in the NCAA tournament. The group is still known as the greatest in Navy history. That's an incredible, incredible. Uh, feet. And uh, and we were a good, cohesive team. Everyone knew their roles. And uh, I tell you, I, I'm just glad I, I was a part of that run. It's really cool to be a part of something that uh, is bigger than yourself. And it's, 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 it's certainly wonderful to be a part of something that uh, is so unique. We captured lightning in a bottle. There are a lot of great teams out there, but 
not every team can put the pieces together. As well as they perform in basketball, they've gone on to perform even better in their adult lives. I mean, they all have a great job, so they're great family people, and it's just an amazing group of guys. When you're representing the military, you're not just representing some folks. You're representing kind of the toughest, you know, the, you know, the most dedicated. You're representing people who represent service, you know, and sacrifice. And so you, you never take that lightly. It's something I truly cherish and I'm, I'm thankful for. And, you know, I love, I love all those guys very, very much, even to this day. For Navy Sports, I'm Phil Bergman.